Okay, if you're just joining, uh, welcome to the Mojib Training Program uh, panel discussion. We're having again, Steve Haley from Motusbox here with Desire, my colleague. Um, and um, a few of you, if you've been to some of these in the past, have seen me talking about the Mojib Training Program before. This is incredibly exciting because today we actually have four people who've actually gone through uh, a large part of the training, both for our programs in Myanmar and our programs in Tanzania. Um, so the purpose we wanna talk about today is for those of you thinking about using the training program, what are some of the good, what are some of the bad? If somebody wants to contribute to the training program, please take some of these lessons that, uh, that the, the participants have, are giving, and then you can find a way how you can contribute to improve the, the program. So I'm gonna quickly allow everyone to introduce themselves and then Desire is going to jump into the, uh, to the panel discussion. So with that, Dr. Shabani, if you can take it away with a, a quick introduction. Dr. Shabani, did we lose you already? All right, while we get him back, Tim, uh, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and give your introduction? Can you hear me? Oh, okay, now we can, go ahead. Okay, I'm a city director of Data Vision International. I'm on this program for onboarding the, 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 the circles and the, uh, financial institutions in the program. Yes, please. Okay, great, Tin. Hi, thanks, Steve. Hello, um, my name is Tin Nguyen and I'm the co-founder and CTO at DesireWorks. DesireWorks is a FinTech that provides uh, various technical solutions like MFI data sharing platform, business intelligence solutions, digital literacy and support for core banking systems to about 70 MFIs in Myanmar. We're implementing Moduloop with Modus Box in Myanmar with plans to become a hub operator when it goes live. Thank you. All right, excited to have you be our newest hub operator. Um, all right, Gabriel. Okay, I'm Gabriel Emmanuel. I work with the HRA Circles, which is, we offer credit services, credit products and the accept savings we take savings from our members. So I'm the head of information technology department here. Thanks. All right, great. Everybody in the world is excited to see how we can get SACOs connected into Mojib and into all payment systems. So thank you for being here. Sai. Hi, uh, I'm Sai Nilin. I'm working at HANA Microfinance in Myanmar as a head of innovation. So La HANA is one of the largest microfinance institute in Myanmar, and it has the majority of the client from the rural areas. Yeah. So HANA has been very actively you know, participating in this uh, module loop uh, project uh, in Myanmar. Yeah. Thanks, Ayab. HANA actually has really been the, the leader uh, for, for this and really been one of the drivers of it. Um, so yay for everybody who's at the convening. We actually have a DFSP uh, on a panel, which is great. We rarely do. Um, so with that, thanks everybody. I'm gonna pass it to Desire to, to start the panel. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm very excited to have all these participants on board today. Um, and as Steve put it, we really just want to hear from the participants themselves what they think of the training program. So one of the key questions that we've been asking ourselves a lot is, is our content targeting the right people? So to start off, maybe I would like to hear from um, Gabrielle. How did you find the training program and do you think we are targeting the right people or what should we do to make sure that we have the right people doing the training? Gabriel? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously, um, uh, what do you think about the program with that? I like it the way that it's flexible to attend, that is online. So it's easy to reschedule time when you attend the work, uh, the employer demands. So in that level, I really like it. Also the content, the content is supposed to be the training. I like it, that is intuitive. And serious, I know it requires the dedication and the sacrifice like all other trainings do. So that's about training, but uh, you've asked about how 
we can make sure that we are we better target the right people. Yeah, so there's nothing to take off from the training because it's really nice. Though I believe the inclusion of YCT personnel and managers is very important, which you have done is very important. They play a big role in overall changes, the changes which are ahead of us. Yeah. However, I think there are some important sections which have been left out. I would like you to, to, to mention maybe like two, three, uh, I think like four noted down. So there's, there's this thing of head of finance departments, maybe financial controllers in other parts. You see these people are very important very very important because they, they really can be championing the project you know the, we, we work together in these things but you see these people need to be championing to to be taking initiatives like uh, and if something you see in an organization where the head of finance or financial controller is like uh, not uh, pushing for technology, for changes, you'll see they'll be stuck. Maybe they'll be writing checks and doing things manually, a lot of stuff. And it, again, this training, they need from this training, maybe it has to be a certain high level training of this module, zero one. It has to be a certain high level thing so that those guys can be included. And I don't think if they'll be willing to go through this online stuff, certainly they'll, it will be necessary, maybe more conducive for them to call them in a certain get together, a certain place, and to tell them what is what, what is in the future, what is about Mojaru. But these guys can champion. And if they are not, they won't be included. You see, these guys are the ones which even if they see something they might be, they don't like, they can just sabotage. You, you see, something can be good, but can be sabotaged too, because it, guys don't understand it or don't like it. And they, because it also needs changes. They need to change. They really need to understand it. benefits, what benefits are there. Everything at a high level. So, because of time, I think in this category for the finance, unless maybe there'll be a question, but that's, I think I should move to other part. So, the other guys, I think you have been left out about members. So, like the other party I've mentioned later, it helps in the process to see in changes and freezing. You need to unfreeze the status quo. And you will need those guys. But again, now we will be having board members. They make important decisions, especially in the South Coast. They are very important and they, they need to support you after all. If they don't support, you see, they can just stay. Like we will see if the government will push, then we will start something. They really need to see the, the benefits of what this thing is good. And you know, it's gonna, it's difficult for it to come direct, maybe only from internally, from people like us. It, we're trying, we do a lot in our organizations to influence the changes. And you're not just always successful. And the, most of the time you need to convince people that this thing and you see the future. You see, I, I, I'm not sure if everybody see how the government and policies are moving, maybe in the world and in the context of Tanzania, but these guys, they need to be there to know that where we are pushing and the, what benefits are there. So they need also the certain, and they won't be going through training, like going online training, because it's not a thing for them. They'll just need a few meetings okay. and the, to keep them yeah, All right, in touch. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Gabrielle. I think those were really important points. Head of finance is something we've never heard before. And I think this is really good feedback and we'll take it on. Um, I just want to welcome Sai so he can also add up a little bit to what you've already spoken about. Um, Sai, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think like the, the, the training, the current the course topic are very uh, well organized, like already very well organized and it has the, the the, the training outline has clearly illustrated, you know, like the different role, the different topic for the different, you know, like the, the role that we can learn. So that part, the content itself is very perfect, you know, so it's very helpful to uh, give the right content to the right people, right? So, yeah, but uh, what, what I would like to see is that uh, if, if we can have a slightly more content version, the con you know, compressed version, for the very uh, uh, quick introduction to give a quick, you know, grasp of what the whole module loop project is about. Like it is a very huge project, a lot of topic inside it, you know, but uh, like, like for myself, it, I don't realize it until I really go into the online course. And when I really dive into one, uh, one or two, you know, courses, only then I realize that, you know, well, there are a lot of things there. So if we can have that content version and then that can quickly reach out to a lot of people and get people, you know, that perhaps of the essence of this Mojelu project. Yeah, that, I think that will be yeah, helpful. Awesome, thank you, uh, Tai. I think one of the key things that we have picked up now is that everyone wants a condensed version of um, a module loop training program, one that we can share with everyone in the team. So um, just to move forward from that, I would like to welcome Thin and ask her a little bit about how does she think our delivery model is? Are we delivering it the right way? That is, you know, the online or would you prefer a more guided course? Um, I think the online courses are really good because it's a self-paced uh, and we can digest the information at our own pace and reread them as needed. But I would also like to have a hybrid approach where we have a uh, weekly or some periodic Q&A session with some subject matter expert where we can clarify concepts and things that we need help with. Um, as far as delivery is concerned, and offline support would be helpful as well um, because uh, there, the internet connection can be intermittent in Myanmar and there are some uh, people who will really benefit from this offline mode. Thanks a lot. Um, the, you, funny you mentioned um, online and uh, internet connection in Tanzania, it's even worse. So I completely understand your pain. And I would like to welcome Dr. Shabani if he could, you know, maybe elaborate a little bit more on that. Mr. Thank you very much. As uh, on, the, on the cause, I think there are three issues if you have to look at this cause. What are the delivery methods? is how do you deliver the course and the course content and the target uh, audience. Now, the target audience here, we, we look at uh, the technical part and then you have also the operational part. Now, as Data Vision is a system integrator, looks at the, the technical part, people is okay for the content which is presented but it lacks the business sense. So the business side of which, where actual decision makers will be actually be looking, if we participate in this program, are we going to do business? There's no time, you can waste time if there's no business of the, uh, out of it. And the other side where you have these uh, MFIs and the like, on the technical side, there are very few who are, are advanced to be able to actually deliver on the technical side. So definitely be needing assistance, most likely from the system integrators. But on the business side, what business are they getting? So it is a lot of convincing that by joining the program, they will benefit a lot because they don't see the end of the tunnel at the moment because they talk about the integration, but they don't know how far they go. So if they had a content which would address that they go to this business on the MFIs, that would be easily adapted. I think that's my contribution. Thank you very much. 
Um, thank you very much, Dr. Shabani. So um, I think we should wrap it up here, but can we maybe hear from all the panelists before we close on what did they enjoy the best and um, in which areas do they think we can improve? And I'd like to start with um, Gabriel, if you could just let us know really quickly what are the things you want us to do better and how much did you enjoy the training? Uh, thanks, thanks. So I've enjoyed the training so much, because the, especially from the point of view that uh, there are some real questions which uh, I was asking myself, especially to these few features that the principles of non repudiation uh, unique identifiers and security, the way it has been covered. So it asks us a lot of questions, and I'm sure a lot of people be asking the same questions differently in, in different scenarios, but that's what I've enjoyed. And I enjoy that I can access it in a time I want. Not like a set up to, I don't want it to be rigid. So maybe I can say all that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sai? Sure. Yeah, yeah, so like for me, is that like I really enjoy like going through the course itself, like you are just lost in that process, you know, so it's how the whole very broad topic is breaking down into very small chunk and small tiny chunk, like, like, like even like the title is so interesting, like what, what is the real time payment, you know? why real-time payment is matter, you know, then the, the, the sharing the adoption of the real-time payment around the globe. You know. So it's, it's breaking down so nicely. And then you just, you know, uh, uh, yeah, you just forget everything, like, like eating popcorn in front of TV, you know, you just keep on, you know, going with the flow. So I really like it, like, yeah. So, and uh, another thing that I want to share is that, okay, maybe it's, it's my, uh, how I let's say uh, evaluate myself. Like I, I, I would like to have more like a knowledge check question you know, for each topic. So it gives me the indicator of how much I have absorbed. You know? so, so like so far like, I only see like one you know, for each of the topic then I feel like, oh, okay, it, it really tell me that, okay, I, I have absorbed it or I haven't absorbed it, I need to go back. You know? so, so yeah, so that, that more question will be helpful. And another thing that I want to, uh, let's say, uh, suggest is that like, there are a lot of courses, right? You know, each course they take like three to four hours, right? And then you have to complete all the courses until you get the whole big picture. And then only then you can, you know, start to work on the project, you know, so more effectively, right? So rather than like, uh, the course is very nice, you know, like if you have time and you can go through the course, give it in you know, like let the people go through it but if we can also have something like a wikipedia kind of wiki page you know for all this content right so i don't need to digest everything i can simply dive into the project and when i need to find i can just easily find it right wiki like, like I, I i also like to go through the wikipedia like it has a link you know like it's linked to all the different different topics and i just keep on like 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 just now like you lost there you just jump on different pages and then you just, you know, keep on consuming, you know, that only as you need, you go and find it, you know. So that kind of uh, another maybe uh, version of this same course uh, in the Wikipedia kind of uh, portal that might be, uh, yeah, very helpful. Like, yeah, that, 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 that's all I have to share. Yeah. Sai, so real quick, since, I mean, that's a really good point. Have, have you ever gone to the Mojuloop documentation page? Um, uh, no, maybe, maybe not. Okay, yeah. no, 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 I wouldn't have expected you to, but that's, I mean, not, not just the links with like a Wikipedia, but we could actually embed links directly into the documentation pages um, in GitHub directly from the, 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 uh, the training. So I really like that suggestion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sai. Um, uh, Dr. Shabani, if you'd like to. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, what actually uh, is, is interesting to us, especially my team, how do they get on to the next level where they will really do the, the practical sessions? And that because the, the members of that team are system integrators, they really want to get their, 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 their screwdriver and the spanners to go in and see how practically 
they can address this, the, 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 the problem and find out the solution they can make out of that system. So if we could uh, offer us uh, the, the path to the next level so that my team can move on, especially by getting the API so that they can do the practice on integration. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chamani. I see you're all ready to go to the next stage. Thank you very much for that feedback. Um, Thin, would you like to give us your final thoughts on the training program? Sure, thanks. Um, like previous uh, Gosai and Gabriel mentioned, uh, I love the content, the way it's broken down and uh, the diagrams are really easy to follow and answer. Uh, the quizzes are also uh, giving you a chance to uh, interact with it and check your knowledge. Like Kosai said, we can kind of verify that whether we are actually getting the material or not. So it's kind of interactive and really helpful in that aspect. Uh, as far as improvement goes, uh, I would like to have some use cases for MFI sector, like uh, because there are some use cases mentioned over there. So I would like to have some of them for um, MFI perspective as well, because everything's mentioned like the FSP. So it could be both ways and uh, it'd be nice to have that explicitly spelled out. And uh, from a technical person perspective, it would be nice to have a test environment where we can really try out the APIs with. So that's really the two things. But other than that, I really love the courses. It gives me a lot of uh, other knowledge that I didn't really think about. So thanks. Actually, can you brought up a point that came up in some of our sessions, which I want to bring out to the whole community since everyone's listening, the term DFSP. I know we're not going to make a decision on that term here, but I should say in a number of places where we're working, that has added a lot of confusion because within the Mojito community, we use the term DFSP to mean all types of regulated financial institutions who can hold money on behalf of a client. However, in some markets, DFSP is explicitly talking about mobile money operators. And so that caused some, some significant confusion for us. Again, I know we're, this is the first, the first um, launch of an attack on that term, but I just want to bring it up that that might be something we as a community need to discuss uh, uh, language and what fits for everybody. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, desires that everyone, because I wanted to ask a, a last question since we've got a little bit more time. That's everyone. I think you can go ahead and so everyone talked about this idea of, of being able to ask questions. And I kind of want to throw it back at you is that we did that. And I think maybe with the exception of Gabriel, which might not be a surprise, most people were silent and didn't ask us a lot of questions on the Q&A section. So we totally understand we need to improve the way we did the Q&A. So I want to actually see if anyone can dive deeper into since we did try to do a Q&A session, what could we have done better about it? Because we didn't have the kind of, I don't think we provided you value when we did it. What could we have done better in the Q&A we did? Ken, you wanna go? Sure, I think in the Q&A session, it would be nicer if we can separate or uh, separate the tar target audience. Like if you're gonna have a technical type questions versus the uh, scheme type question for different users. And also a smaller group will be better. Sometimes we're not quite comfortable asking all the questions and coming out like really clueless. So it'd be nicer to have a smaller, maybe uh, similar type of like same group people participants from the same MFI or who are participate, participating in the implementation that will be better. Okay, thank you. Others have ideas on improving the Q&A that we did? The Q&A, I think, is, a, is, a, is a making the team aware uh, and make them uh, think seriously about it. It's an area where you could uh, really get a, a, some resolve on issues. So it's just to encourage people to use it. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an important tool. I'll do encourage them to use that in our site. Okay. 
Uh, just to echo what 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 say said about smaller groups. So what we did in Tanzania for the panelist session, and then we had very few questions. But then outside of that, we also had WhatsApp groups of everyone who's doing the training. In in the WhatsApp groups, people would be more comfortable to share um, questions. So perhaps what's I saying about having I mean Tin is saying about having smaller groups really helps with the Q and A because people are more comfortable to ask questions. I definitely agree with that. I, I, for me, when I was a participant going through it, I remember I had a hard time finding a, the, finding a way to reference a question. So if I came up with something I didn't understand, it was, if there, if I knew there was a QA and a a week later, it was very difficult because there was no signpost to be able to say in this, or the signposts were difficult to be able to say in this section, I had a question about this sentence. And so I think it would be, for me, I think it would be easy, great if we found a way to make sure that people can mark where their questions are or if we have specific uh, answers. What about the idea, so Tinji, your point of smaller groups, what about the idea of if Q&A sessions or, or additional sessions should be focused around the particular project that we're working on as opposed to Mojo Loop? Is it, would that be beneficial or would that be too, too confusing? Stick to the, the theoretical. Anyone have thoughts on that of having project specific Q and A versus um, generic Q and A? I, I think like both will serve its own purpose, right? So yeah, okay. I think it, it will be good to have both, and so that it's either project specific or yeah, the generic one. Right. Thanks, Sainten. Yeah, I was going to say the same, like it would be good to have both types because uh, general concept and then we can, once we get the general concept, we can have a, a project oriented questions, like specific questions. Okay. What about the idea of homework? Would having homework assignments um, be something that can focus a Q&A around an actual activity it wasn't actually uh, covered? Is that something that we should introduce? Actually, with the Q and A sessions, uh, we are implicitly doing that. So for this Friday, we're going to have a Q and A session. So we wanted to have this module covered within our team, so that by the time Friday comes, we have enough material to review and ask questions. So it's sort of like implicit in reading material, but that's really uh, helpful. Otherwise, we'll be free falling. Okay. Um, right, I would just like to add, yeah. there's a comment that's been shared here that I think it is better if there is certification program like Microsoft's certified application developer, maybe Mojo Loop certified developer or something like that. So thank for that feedback, Moi. Yeah. And so moment on that point, I would say it's, it's a great comment and a lot of people have brought it up. I, I would like to say it, it, it's a conversation that we've had many times over the past two years of if there should be a certification process the, and, and what should be the, what should you be certified on and who is responsible for doing that certification? Um, is this something that the Mojo community and Mojo Foundation should do? Or is this something that a company like Modusbox would certify that you have gone through um, the training and that you, you're, you're qualified? Um, so I think that's a, um, so I would just let me let Paula off the hook of saying, no, we all agree that this is not something the Mojo Foundation should be doing. The question is who should and can be doing the certification of any kind and what would you be certifying on? So I would just say it's, it's something that's part of the discussion, but we, what does certification mean and who is responsible for providing certification are still open questions um, that I think keep coming to these convenings and, and be a part of that discussion because that's still open questions for the community to decide. Paula, did you want to touch on that one? Sure, I, I don't want to rule it out entirely. I just thought at the time that these conversations percolated up with regard to certification, we weren't prepared to take that on. Um, so I still think it's a valid discussion point. Um, it just, you know, we didn't even, when we this first percolated up, I don't even think we had the, the training program launched. Um, so now that we have that behind us, so to speak, um, we're still developing more courses. Uh, it, it may be worthwhile looking at how do we, 
validate that, you know, you may not even use the word certify, but how do we validate and let credential people that have made it through the courses? So definitely worth, worth uh, further discussion, no, no question. So great point, point Becky moment. I think we're, please do show up with these in the future and then we'll, um, then the next question will be, how about the people who already went through them? Do they get grandfathered in? Um, so, okay, Desire, uh, let me turn it back up to you. I think we're close to time. Yeah, um, I think we're done unless, uh, yeah, I think we're done for now. Um, thank you very much for everyone who has joined. It was really good to have the mixture between system integrators and SACOS and MFIs. And we're looking forward for the next round of feedback. So Steve, back to you. Okay. I mean, once again, I'd like to thank all the, the people who joined, Dr. Shabani, Tin, Sai, and Gabriel, and the organizations they work for. This has been a, an absolutely amazing time to work with all of you. Um, and, and we appreciate you being the the first ones to go through this training so we can constantly improve it. So please keep, keep with the feedback. We, we wanna make sure that this is a community-driven training program that, that helps the community. So thank you so much to everybody and looking forward to seeing you back at our programs.